All right, this is number three from the 2010 AP Physics B exam, and it is primarily an electrostatics problem. And we've got a lot of stuff up here. We've got three different charges, all geometry is given for how they're separated. We've got uh, charge three is experiencing a 1 by 10 to the negative 6, or no, it is 1 by 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. That charge is experiencing a net force to the left due to the other two charges. Lots of numbers, lots of information. We want to know the signs of charges 1 and 2 and then indicate the direction, the correct signs. So we got a bunch of different possibilities. For example, this guy could be pushing charge 3 away from it. Technically, it could be pulling it towards it as long as this guy is pulling it towards it with enough. But in reality, if they're, let, let's go on this. If they're both negative, they would both attract the charge towards them. One could be more negative, so causing it to be more attracted to the left, but they'd both be pulling it down, so we'd have a net force down somewhere. In order to make it so there's only a net force to the left, we need to have one charge pushing it upward and the other charge pulling it downward. Well, it's logical that this guy is going to be the one that's pulling it down and towards it, and this guy is going to be pushing it up and away from it. I'm going to draw the vectors down here. For now, I need to understand that this guy has got to be attractive. Negative is attractive to positive. This one's got to be repulsive, so it's positive. Now we're going to do the uh, direction of F1 exerted by particle 1 and particle 3 and then particle 2 and particle 1. So if, uh, again, if we were to label them the way they do, 1, 2, and 3, so this would be charge 1, charge 2, and charge 3. Charge 2 is repelling charge 3, so we're going to get F2 is like this. And F1 is pulling it towards it. Now, we don't know which one's bigger or not yet. We have to do some math to figure that out. So as long as the relative size aren't grossly different, you're fine. They don't need to be different in sizes. And they don't need to be the same either. They just shouldn't be, like, ridiculously different in size. Uh, you might see, and don't do this on the real exam. I'm just going to do this to show you. You might see that the Y component of F2 will be canceled out by the Y component of F1, leaving only that X component, and that's going to be that net force listed up top. C wants us to calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force, the net force acting on particle 3. This is where we start doing all kinds of fun math using the Coulomb's equation, Coulomb's law. Uh, the general equation is F equals KQ1, Q2 over the distance between them squared. Or, you know, it could be Q2, Q3, or Q1, Q3, really any combination of the Qs. Because we have two different forces, I'm going to find them apart from each other separately, and then I'll figure out what to do to combine them. So F1, and this is just magnitude alone, all right? We've already figured out direction, so don't plug in sign. This is a vector term, so we're not going to plug in positives or negatives. We're going to plug in the magnitudes. So F1, which is really F13, is going to be uh, K, Coulomb's constant, so that's 9 by 10 to the 9... And that's a newton meter squared. Oops. Let's get rid of that. It's a newton meter squared per coulomb squared. That'll be char times uh, the bottom charge, four micro coulombs. And I'm going to run out of room here. I can tell already. So let me move this over. So four by ten to the negative six coulombs times the charge of particle 3, which is the 1 by 10 to the negative 6 coulomb. And that's going to be divided by the distance between them, and that geometry was given as 4 meters. we got to square that term. Make sure you square only the 4. Keep track of your parentheses, your calculator work, etc., and you're going to get a value of 2.25 by 10 to the negative 3 newtons. F2 is going to be the same equation, just different numbers. We're going to use this value of charge down here, which is the 1.7 by 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And then we're going to continue to have that 1 by 10 to the negative 6 coulomb x. That's charge 3. And we're going to divide by their, their separation, which was 3 uh, meters squared. And we're going to get a force uh, due to that charge of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's newtons. 
So again, this is the 1.7 by 10 to negative 3. This is the 2.25 by 10 to negative 3. Uh, that's not the answer yet. That's each individual component. Because they're vectors, we do need to combine them. And you don't just add them. They're not in the same direction. Now, you could go down this long path of determining the x and y values of each and the x and y values of the other one and then combine your y's and then combine your x's and then use Pythagorean to put it all together. That's going to be a ton of work. Or you can recognize this nice simple math. If this is 90 degrees here, this is 90 degrees here. Well, whenever we have two vectors at 90 degrees, if we slide them in the tail to tip method, so I'm going to redraw these off to the side. If we draw a tail to tip, so this is my F1. I'm going to put F2 here. This is my 90 degree angle. Them combined together, we're looking for the hypotenuse of that right triangle. We're just going to use Pythagorean here. That's definitely the easiest way of doing this. So your net force F is going to be the square root of each leg squared. And we get an overall, yeah, once we do that squaring and the square rooting, we're going to get an overall value of 2.8 times 10 to the negative 3 newtons. And that is the answer to part C. D now says, what's the magnitude of the electric field at that spot due to the other two particles? Well, you could, again, go down the long path of going with the fundamental equation, or you can remember that the electric field anywhere is going to be equal to the force acting on any charged particle at that spot divided by the charge of said particle. Wow. Okay, computer's freaking out. There we go. So it's the force that we just found, 2.8 by 10 to the negative 3 newtons, divided by the charge of charge 3, and that was the 1 by 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. This is going to get us an overall electric field of 2.8 by 10 to the 3. That's going to be a newton per coulomb. Certainly the easiest way of doing part D. And then finally, E says, on the figure below, put an X at the position that's going to cause uh, where another positively charged particle will cause the overall force on particle 3 to be 0. This should be pretty simple to do. We have already a net force to the left, so we need to cancel out that force. Well, par positive particles will repel other positive particles. So if we just place this guy right here to the left, it's going to push or it's going to repel away. And if it's got the right value and the right distance, it's going to make it 0. To justify that, you can justify it in all sorts of different directions. Ultimately, you just need to indicate that you need the net force to be zero, and that positive repels other positive. That should be enough for this problem. All right, that's it for number three. Thank you.